Frank Castle, the Marvel Universe's one-man army of retribution. If you're an evildoer, pray you never see this skull-clad figure knocking on your door. When his family is killed, this ex-military man takes up arms to battle the never-ending tides of crime and corruption. But what Punisher stories are must-reads? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you today. Welcome, everyone, to Required Reading. Now, as with any comic character, a great place to start when wanting to learn more about them is to track down their very first appearance, and for the Punisher, that was Amazing Spider-Man number 129 from February 1974. What's interesting about this story is that the Punisher is actually presented as something of a villain. Frank gets manipulated by longtime Spider-Man foe and clone enthusiast the Jackal into trying to kill Spider-Man because he believes he's actually a bad guy. Here's the thing, though. As the story progressed, writer Jerry Conway began to enjoy the character, and as such, the Punisher saw the light and eventually turned on the Jackal for lying to him. This is one classic tale that would set the groundwork for many more cameo appearances and eventually a solo series of his own. Now, the Punisher's first solo miniseries would come in 1986's Circle of Blood from writer Stephen Grant. This book managed to do a lot for the anti-hero in just a few short issues. For one, Grant went out of his way to try and make the Punisher a more three-dimensional character and less of a one-note video. As the story goes, the Punisher is recruited by a similar group of kill em all crime fighters called the Trust in hopes of cleaning up New York City. In the end, though, the Punisher is used as a pawn in kickstarting a gang war that threatens to envelop the entire city. The Trust, as we discover, are all a bunch of maniacs who have been brainwashing criminals to try and turn them into their own private death squad modeled after the Punisher, including longtime Frank Castle villain Jigsaw. What you gotta understand is that for 80s Marvel, Marvel, this book was actually pretty boundary-pushing in terms of violence as well as themes of sex, crime, even suicide gets touched on in this book. Circle of Blood was also a story not afraid to explore the gray and grayer morality of the Punisher's world. You see, one of the bad guys out to hurt Frank is actually the son of someone he killed during his Punishment Crusade, who was never a bad guy before this, but who now seeks to even the score. At first, Marvel executives didn't even want to print the book because of the content, but in the end, the actual real-world rising crime rates in America helped push their hands in releasing the book after all. Circle of Blood is a hard-boiled little mini that, to this day, still has some of the most iconic Punisher images, proof positive that, you know, a more violent hero could actually be a hit at Marvel. Next up on Required Reading, we have The Creep and the Bully, a two-part crossover that spawns Punisher Volume 2, Number 10, and Daredevil, Number 257. It's no secret Frank Castle and Matt Murdock have had a long and storied history in the comics, and honestly, there was about several tales that I could have picked to highlight here, but in the end, I wanted to offer up a two-part crossover that most people seem to forget about, and that is The Creep and the Bully. This 1988 story really let you get inside the head of our two heroes and see what they think of each other, a creep and a bully, thus the title. This story also gets points for drawing inspiration from the headlines of the day. You see, both The Punisher and Daredevil are on the trail of a man who's been killing people by tampering with aspirin bottles, slipping poison into them. Daredevil believes this guy with the bad haircut, evil though he may be, should face the justice system, while the Punisher believes that the only justice for this guy will come at the end of a gun barrel. The story does a great job showcasing how strongly both our heroes hold their beliefs, and how while the Punisher might share the Marvel Universe with more colorful superheroes, his violent methods will always make him something of an outsider looking in. Now before we move on to our next entry here on Required Reading, I think it's important to get one thing straight, and that is that the latter part of the 90s was a hard time for the Punisher. Too many bad stories in a row culminated in a laughable new status quo, wherein he was turned into an actual angel of vengeance, gifted with magical guns to do the bidding of heaven. Thankfully, in the 2000s, Irish writer Garth Ennis would come along and not only return the Punisher to his street-level noir roots, but breathe new life into the anti-hero as part of the Marvel Knights line of comics. While I personally believe anything Punisher related with Ennis's name on it is is an absolute must read, and trust me, we'll be talking about him a lot in this video. There's just so many great stories I could pick, like Welcome Back Frank that served as the basis for the ill-fated Thomas Jane Punisher movie, Confederacy of Dunces that sees the Punisher match wits with heroes like Spider-Man and Daredevil who are fed up with his more brutal approach to crime fighting. But you know what, I'm gonna buck some trends here and pick not a whole story arc, but instead a powerful little one-shot called Don't Fall Down in New York City from the sixth issue of the 
second Marvel Knights Punisher run. You see, this story finds Frank on the trail of a retired vet, much like himself, only this guy cracked under the pressure and murdered his whole family before going on the run in the city. This means the Punisher has to race against time and the cops to catch this guy before he can kill again. What really sells this story for me is two things. One, Ennis's amazing use of internal monologue. Seriously, Frank is just a lonely guy who spends so much of the comic inside his own head talking to himself, but it's all just so riveting. And two, the way the story ends. You think Frank, you know, will offer this guy some sympathy knowing where he's coming from and everything, but he doesn't. He's just as cold to this guy as he is to any other criminal he deals with, even though you could make the argument that they're birds of a feather in so many ways. Truly, the title says it all. Never fall down in New York City because no one is going to catch you when you do. Now, from a one-shot to an origin story, we have Bourne. Now, the Punisher has always been a hero with deep ties to Vietnam, and while Frank Castle's war would be changed and updated over the years, as with many Marvel characters who aren't Captain America, as far as Ennis was concerned, it was always the fires of Nam from which the Punisher was forged, and that's what Bourne is all about. It's a 2003 story that isn't really a superhero story at all. It's a down and dirty war story. We as the reader are treated to an unprecedented look into Frank Castle's time in the army and the events that would help shape him into the finely tuned killing machine we know today. Born is a story that pulls no punches in its brutality and would seek to say something broke in Frank Castle long before his family was actually killed. It's also around this time too Ennis took the opportunity to retcon and update some stuff about the Punisher's past, mainly that Frank Frank Castle is only the name he used during his second tour in Vietnam. His real name is actually Francis Castiglione. Yeah, wrap your minds around that everyone, Mr. Loves to Kill Mobsters is actually of Italian descent himself, go figure. As far as I'm concerned, Bourne is the definitive Punisher origin story. It pulls no punches and Ennis manages to infuse the story with some real hard-hitting Vietnam War history that makes this one of the finest War as Hell comics I've ever read. Next up in our Punisher cavalcade, we have the storyline Widowman from the original Punisher Max before it got renamed Frank Castle, but that's a whole other story. If Marvel Knight's Punisher brought fresh life into the Punisher character, what did Ennis decide to do for an encore? Oh, you know, just give the world Punisher Max a brand new run in a brand new imprint that existed outside the main continuity, which meant stories could be even darker, more violent, feature more sinister crimes, and no spandex-clad heroes, as well as a much older, meaner Frank Castle. Once again, I consider all of Max to be a must read, but if you really twisted my arm and made me pick one story that I thought exemplified just how great this series was, that would have to be Widowmaker. The book starts with the Punisher busting up a child pornography ring, and believe it or not, things only get more horrifying from there. In fact, some of Frank's all-time best cynical lines ever come from this story. You remember that great bit in the Punisher Warzone movie where Frank says, sometimes I just want to get my hands on God? Yeah, that's from this story. In fact, a lot of Warzone is actually from this story. You see, in the book, a bunch of the wives of the dead mobsters that the Punisher had killed during his adventures have all come together to try and kill him once and for all. The story really shines a light on the nature of revenge and lets us see it from a bunch of different angles. The widows are all different levels of evil, yet you strangely come to sympathize with them once you come to realize that with their husbands gone, no one really cares about them anymore. In fact, the ringleader of these women, we find out, had her two sons, her husband and her father, all killed killed in the same night by the Punisher. There's also a great B-plot in here about Detective Budiansky. You'll remember him as the cop from Warzone. He killed a school shooter and now he isn't exactly sure if he should feel bad about it or not, despite the fact that everyone in his life is telling him he should be. Widowmaker combines so many of my favorite Punisher elements into a single story, and while Frank is certainly cool here, Ennis goes out of his way to remind you that he's also scary, and that's really, you know, the mark of a great anti-hero when he becomes scary to the reader. The book also asks the question, when, if ever, will Frank's punishment crusade end, and how many more people will be drawn into it before it's all over? Now, our penultimate comic in this installment of Required Reading is yet another one-shot, Dark Reign, The List, The Punisher, number one, from 2009. And I think this one actually needs a little bit of backstory. You see, after the events of Secret Invasion, Norman Osborn, aka the Green Goblin, became the new head of S.H.I.E.L.D., and as such, he ushered in a much darker age of the Marvel Universe. The Punisher, who's made a career out of killing bad guys, obviously took offense to this, and Rick Remember's run on the anti-hero was pretty much just Frank trying to kill Osborne and all the people who worked for him. All of this comes to a head in the pages of the list one-shot, wherein the chickens come home to roost and the former Green Goblin hits the Punisher with everything he 
has and more. This story is essentially the death of the Punisher, and he goes out like a freaking boss. John Romita Jr. is no stranger to drawing violent beatdowns, and he gives the Punisher one a hell of a final stand with all the sweat and blood that it would require. He may just be a normal man, but he refuses to lay down, even when he's going up against foes like Dokken, the evil son of Wolverine who dwarfs him in terms of raw power. Frank just wouldn't stay dead for long, however, because hey, this is comic books and who stays dead, am I right? He was later reborn as Frank and Castle, but you know what, that's a story for another video. All you need to know about this one is, is that the Punisher dies the way he lived, like a badass. And our final comic we're talking about here on Required Reading is the Punisher Max Bullseye by Jason Aaron. So I think we've established that Garth Ennis's Punisher Max was a truly landmark series, but it never really had a proper conclusion. It just kind of sort of petered out. When I heard Jason Aaron was picking up the slack, I didn't know what to think. Little could I have known that his time with the series would have been, you know, just as good, building on what came before and plotting a new course for the book. You'll remember I mentioned before how in Garth Ennis's Max universe, it was outside continuity, so the Punisher really didn't run into any other superheroes. Well, under Jason Aaron, the book saw the rise of the Max version of Wilson Fisk the Kingpin, and with that, Bullseye, an assassin hired to off the Punisher once and for all. Only, you see, this Bullseye was a lot different than any other version of the famous assassin we've seen in any Daredevil story. This guy sought to become the Punisher in order to kill him, and the story shows him going to extreme lengths to understand what makes the Punisher tick and what informs his brand of madness. He wears Frank's clothes, he sleeps at his family's grave, he kidnaps a family to try and recreate the Central Park shooting, all to try and get inside Frank's noggin. The big takeaway from Bullseye's research, and indeed this run as a whole, seems to be the idea that even if Frank's family didn't die, even if he didn't put on the skull, he would still probably be out there killing people in one way or another. It's super dark, but then again, most great Punisher stories are. Special note should also be given to Steve Dillon's artwork. Dillon is sadly no longer with us, but he had a great run on Punisher stories. The dude had a real uncanny eye for human ugliness, and he uses that to great effect here in the Bullseye story. He is absolutely disgusting on just about every level. And there you have it, everybody. Some of the very best Punisher stories to get you started reading the character. I feel like I talked forever and barely scratched the surface on this topic, so don't be shocked if I end up making a required reading Punisher Volume 2. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the video, and in the comments section down below, feel free to share with me your own favorite Punisher stories. Also, if there's a hero or team you would like to see featured on required reading, well, be sure to let me know that as well. Until next time, everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching my newest video. I hope you enjoyed it, and while you're here, why not check out another video I have on offer, or maybe if you're feeling in a supportive mood, you want to like or subscribe. And if you want to support the creation of more videos just like this one, then please, by all means, check out the Cape Joel Patreon. A little bit goes a very long way, and I will see you all next time.